Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sather. I am your host, Head Honcho, Vegan Chorizo Poppy, founder of Ball Nigga Ballers, Armand Sather. Whoa, I'm back. A little bonus episode during the offseason. This is for a very, very special reason. Now, if you listen to the show, if you follow me on social media, if you've seen my birthday promo from last year, then you know I am a huge wrestling fan. And Stay Busy has had the incredible opportunity to bring on one of the hottest wrestlers of the last year. This man is a former million-dollar champion. He is an upcoming participant in the Money in the Bank ladder match taking place on Saturday, July 1st, in London, on Peacock. None other than L.A. Knight. Me and L.A. Knight talk about the Money in the Bank ladder match, of course, the fact that Logan Paul snuck his way into the match, his opponents Ricochet, Shinsuke Nakamura, Damian Priest, we talk about his preparation for the ladder match. We talk about his past experience doing ladder matches against Cameron Grimes. We talk about hip hop and we talk about him as a person. The dude is super charismatic like me. So we got along really well. And yeah, we talk about a career that he wishes that he could do, but he doesn't really know if he could organize his thoughts to do it. So I'm going to leave that little Easter egg there for y'all. Definitely want y'all to enjoy this interview. So we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, you're going to hear from none other than L.A. Knight. Yeah. I'm all yours. What are we doing? Let's let's get right to it, man. Money in the Bank is coming up. How are, how are you feeling about this match that we have seen change people's careers? Uh, yeah, and it can change your career in a couple different ways, because uh, what you got these ladders in there. Man, anything can happen. <laughs> You can get your body banged up. You can come out with a contract. You can go to either end of the spectrum on this one. But um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it because I think London's going to be uh, kind of a uh, rabid crowd, if you will, uh, just with the reactions and how invested they're going to be in this. And uh, as invested as they are, uh, you can bet all seven, of, all seven of us in the match are going to be way more invested because there's so much on the line uh there, there's so much to consider and like you said life changing career changing um and that does seem to be the buzzword right now but um i don't know man i i think it's gonna be a wild one and uh we'll see what happens we got a what what about a week week and a day huh yeah so you have experience doing ladder matches related to money um this is in uh, reference to your ladder match with cameron grimes uh, sounds like i got a little bit of an advantage doesn't it <laughs> yeah but obviously this match has you know a few more people so what what are you preparing for what, what are some things that you're looking out for um what are some things that you're trying to avoid being in this multi-person ladder match compared to your one-on-one that you had well i mean obviously you got to keep your head on a swivel um but at the same time, it's just, you know, as far as preparing in, in that regard, it's trying to keep myself out of doing anything incredibly stupid. Because uh, a lot of these guys are going to try and do some, you know, big stunts and some stuff where it's like, oh, I'm going to do something extreme and cool and memorable. <laughs> the only thing memorable I'm trying to do is hold that case at the end of the damn thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that that's my goal. That that That's my strategy. And that's what I'm looking at. So, so. Uh, memorable okay you guys do all that cool stuff I, i'm gonna be busy grabbing that case <laughs> speaking of guys who do things uh, that are memorable logan paul uh last monday came in and said yeah i talked to the the executives i found my way into the match and um you you, you didn't seem too happy about that is, is is he one of the people that that you're gonna like keep your head on a swivel for um or is, is there anyone in the match in particular that, that, that you're gonna be specifically like i i want to stay away from them or I, I need to watch them and and you know see what they're doing i don't want to speak for anybody but i think everybody's kind of got their eye on him just because you got six guys who whether you like them or you don't all competed in order to get in this match and how to qualify a match and then this guy walks in and just goes hey guys i'm here hi i'm gonna be in this match now <laughs> And that's fine. I ain't going to bellyache and complain about that because that, that gives me the opportunity to slap him right across his face. But uh, here's the thing. Yeah. I, is there anybody particular I'm looking out for? The only guy I can say maybe uh, like a Damian Priest because you got the tallest guy in the damn thing. So so that's a bit of an advantage. But everybody brings their own their own thing to the game. So, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, you got to keep an eye out for everybody and what they're doing. But 
there's there's different advantages and drawbacks to everybody sure absolutely and uh ricochet and shinsuke you had some words for them you said that they were as useless as basketball cleats <laughs> you ever try to run on a uh on a basketball court with some cleats that's pretty rough <laughs> I, I uh, have not. I'm just like, yo, how, how do you come up with this stuff? <laughs> well, I made it just think of something that's really useless. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It was just there's there's the guys in the ring. If there were more guys in the ring, I'd have more to say. But at the time, it was just using using what's in front of me uh, mm -hmm. and and going from there. So yeah, I don't know. Just talking my talk. You you've got this like this this it, it seems like it comes easy to you the, the charisma the quips the jokes like where where do you think that comes from like did did you do stand-up comedy prior to your wrestling career where, i've always where, wanted you... to do stand-up i just can't i just can't organize my thoughts enough <laughs> like i'm so i'm i'm uh, i'm so much more of like an on the fly guy like i want to mm -hmm. just talk and react to the stuff that's happening like around me and I just want to go off of whatever's being given to me at the time. So if I hear somebody say something, I might be able to go and react off of that. But like, I've I, for years, I've been like, man, it'd be cool to do stand up, but I can never, I, I'm never good at sitting and organizing my thoughts like pen to paper. Mm -hmm. So man, that, that, that's been a challenge. But um, a lot of it's just you just start vibing and just start thinking and stuff comes to mind. The map thing literally was five minutes before I came out and, and I just grabbed a production guy and I said, where can I get a map? And he was like, what? And I said, I was like, can somebody print off a map for me real quick? Didn't tell him why, nothing at all. And he was like, what do you need a map of? I said, I don't care. Give me a map of anything at all. It can be a map of like a children's, like, like pirate treasure map. I don't care. Just get me a map. <laughs> five <laughs> minutes later, I've got a map. Cool. Done. Got it in the pocket. So now he can come out there and say the thing about the map and where he can, you know, go and stick his prime. <clears throat> and it's just stuff just comes to me. Um, just happens. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredible, man. It's, it's definitely one of the most entertaining things. Like every week watching SmackDown, it's like, yo, what, what is LA Knight going to say? Who's he going to say it to? How's he going to make people feel? And the crowd goes crazy. Like what, what's it been like to see the response to you coming in as Max Dupree on the main roster? And then Ooh. reverting back to, <laughs> and then reverting back to LA Knight and and getting the reaction that you have. Uh, well, I've got no damn business being here because uh, uh, in, in a lot of ways, uh, going from that to this, that's a big, uh, it's a big albatross around the neck. That's a big weight right there to overcome. But somehow, in a, in a short amount of time. Well, except for you bringing it up now, and most people have forgotten about it. So, uh, so that's pretty damn good. Uh, I'd, I'd say that's a testament to hell. I don't know what, but uh, something somehow, uh, and, and I've made it work. So, I, I think that I think that what it comes down to is one of those was much more authentically me than the other, right? And so, when you can see that. I can't say what makes people gravitate toward that. I can only guess. So uh, my, my best guess is just that they're seeing that this is more me. This is more who I am. And uh, I'm much more able to be this and do this because I don't have to really, I don't have to research and go outside and go, well, who is this person? Let me figure this out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a lot of people bring up The Rock. They bring up Stone Cold Steve Austin when, when they talk about you and, and your abilities <clears> on the mic. I, I, I think everyone would be influenced by them just because of how transcendent and generational they were. But are there any other people who came before you that, that you looked up to in terms of mic work and character work? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there, there's some flair in there. Uh, oddly, I even I'll see people a lot of times say Macho Man, and there's not a lot of Macho Man, but there's a little bit of that in there too. Yeah. Uh, Jake, Jake the Snake, there's some of that in there. Even sometimes a little bit of Piper, um, but but I mean, there's also stuff from from pop culture and 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 different. Uh, I'm a big hip hop guy, uh, so there's a lot of stuff that that I might steal or take from from different songs and stuff like that. A lot of Jay-Z, a lot of Dr. Dre tracks, Snoop, all those guys. I'm a big West Coast guy, but also mm. like 
Jay-Z I can get with just because like there's a there's a swagger to him and his beats are like I, I was never like a New York East Coast hip hop guy for the most part it just didn't I didn't feel it the same but mm -hmm. anything that just has that feeling like I'm the guy yeah. and a lot of that has it I can take from that um but yeah I, I mean look a, a, a lot of people try to say oh there, there's there's a copy there's this there's that well I'll tell you what you'll never see me steal a line from any of those guys you'll never see me uh, steal anything from those guys now if I've been influenced in some way with the way that I talk that's just the way I talk so I can't do anything about that so uh at the same time you know I look at Hulk Hogan and then I look at Billy Graham I look at Jesse Ventura and then I look at Billy Graham I look at Ric Flair and then I look at Buddy Rogers so I mean there's always people who are influenced and then I look even outside of wrestling, I look at Kobe Bryant and I look at Michael Jordan. Right. So if you want to make me the Kobe to the Michael, sure, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm so glad you brought up the hip hop point. Obviously, Vibe being a hip hop magazine, me being a hip hop reporter, I wanted to ask, like, what music <clears throat> is L.A. Knight listening to before when he's getting ready for a match or or even like oh, to taking the bus to, to the arena? I have... Um... I have a very eclectic mix. I, like I'll, I'll listen to everything top to bottom, but since I was a kid, don't know why it's always been hip hop. Like that's like number one main, like if, if you would ask my girlfriend or anybody around me who knows me, they're always going to say West coast hip hop, <laughs> just like nineties, early two thousands. Um, I mean, if you're talking like the last few years, um, definitely like Drake, um, uh, Jay-Z, Kanye before he went nuts, uh, <laughs> you know, all, all that kind of stuff. So um, it, 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 that's probably the biggest thing, because to me, it all just gives you that a lot of those artists give you that vibe. But just like I own this. This is this is my thing. This is me. Um, and, and I don't know, just you get a good beat and it's like, OK, cool. Like even when I was trying to put my intro and my, my entrance music together um i was basically telling him like i want a good mix of like rock and rap in a certain sense uh mm. as far as like the, the way it feels and so just trying to get all that together and getting the drums sounding right and all that kind of stuff and just it, it has the right feel to where that gets me pumped and ready to go so um yeah it, 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 hip hop is it like i i, <laughs> I, I don't know where it came. a lot of it comes from my brother my older brother mm for whatever reason was dialed into stuff that like nobody else around was really in, like above the law. Nobody, nobody that I even still like a lot of my friends have no idea who that is. Um, uh, you know, they were part of ruthless records with easy ease thing and all that kind of stuff with NWA and everything. Um, I, I mean, just ice cube showing up and the, the Dre records. And then he would take it back to like parliament and then we'd have like the parliament CDs and you'd have like, Teddy Pendergrass, you know, the Isley brothers. And it's just like, wow, like all this stuff hit me from my oldest brother. And it's just like, wow, this is good stuff. And I would start just taking his CDs and recording on the tapes when that was the thing. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I, I got a big influence from him. Um, and, and that stuff just spoke to me. I, and, and now that I think about it, I think about your music, you do carry yourself a little, like a rapper, like just the way you walk. Um, it's just, just like, like I, I almost want to see you and John Cena battle rap. <laughs> I have a, uh, I have a small history as a rapper in high school, but it was just stupid and just nonsensical. We just, <laughs> we just made like raunchy, stupid raps as like seventeen year olds, you know, but pubescent seventeen year olds rapping about dumb stuff with girls. It was <laughs> not for public consumption. Never will be. <laughs> I feel that I've definitely got a few of those mixtapes myself. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> it's, it's 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 kind of just part of be, growing up, becoming a man. Like we all yeah, got to try rap yeah. at some point. We just we'd we'd have instrumental tracks and just start. You know, we couldn't freestyle for shit, but it was just all right. Well, let's just let's write something. Da -da -da. Just dumb stuff. <laughs> So it, it is hip hop's 50th anniversary this year, as I'm sure you're aware of. If you had the opportunity to have one, one rapper rap your either rap you like to the, to the ring for a match, whether it's at WrestleMania or like at, at, at any PLE, 
Who would mm. you want that rapper to be? You've been talking a lot about West Coast guys, but Jay Z, Drake, like who, who who would you want to rap L.A. Night to the ring? Man, if if it was to be, um, God, first thing I think of is a Dre beat with like maybe Jay Z over it, or even it, maybe Jay Z and Dre, and and I know Dre is not necessarily you know. He's not maybe the greatest rapper or whatever, but like, I love his voice, his voice right. quality uh, and just the way he delivers the lines and whatnot. Um, so it would have to be some combination of those two. Okay. 100%. Like just that. because there's just, there's a hardness and a depth to those two that, that just, again, it, it just personifies like everything that I feel and that I'm kind of carrying you just said it <laughs> like there, there's a certain way that I'm carrying myself. And it's like almost in the spirit of like the way that those guys rap their songs. All right. For sure. For sure. Who, who are some people in the locker room that you, you end up spending a lot of time with or who have positively impacted your, your career and, and, and your progression, especially now that you're on the main roster. Um. I, I mean, look, I, I spent some time with Paul Bear about 10 years ago for like three years. Um, so, I mean, of course, being being with him was was invaluable. Um, you know, to be able to go to him and ask him questions and things like that. Um, having the the outlets of, of certain people on the main roster as well, um, as far as people who've been there for a long time. Um, I don't want to go into details and names and whatnot, but I mean, there's definitely people who you can kind of, Maybe not everybody uses these outlets, but it's like sometimes you just go up and be like, hey, man, look, you know, I'm trying to work on this or, or get this done or whatever. Like, what's the best approach? What, what's the route? And because historically I've not been good at that. And so I just go the route of frustration <laughs> and sitting there and just kind of being angry and having this kind of look on my face, uh, the RDF, resting dick face. And uh, <laughs> where I'm just, I'm just kind of always like this. And, and I don't want to, you know, run through every day like that, but some days I just can't help it. Um, so sometimes, you know, you, you want to get that outlet of just like, Hey man, how can I, how can I push this agenda? How can I do this? Whatever. And there's, there's certain outlets of people that, um, you know, you can go through and, and, and speak to who, who actually have like good, who had, who've had experience enough to tell you. For sure. Um, yeah. One one thing I'll say about LA Knight, and I'm I'm sure you agree with this, is you, you you're the attraction. Like people should want to wrestle you. Like you're you you're the one who even someone like a a Seth Rollins should want to come and wrestle. A Roman Reigns should want to come and wrestle. But do you have a, any dream opponents? People that you would want to get in the ring with? Um, main main event a show, main event a, a, a PLE with? Like just anyone in particular. I mean, if they hadn't all aged out, I mean, all the, the, the guys that are named before Hogan, Rock, Austin, mm -hmm. Flair, that ain't possible. Um, even I, I mean, seen as a part of that. Um, but I mean, for me, it's like, I try not to, I don't, that, that stuff would all be cool and everything. But for me, the, the dream match is me wrestling the guy who's the champion and leaving with the championship. So <laughs> that's basically just, where I'm set with that, as far as that, that that's the dream. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that, 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 but, but as far as like wanting to work with me, I, I don't know, maybe there's, uh, maybe people still aren't sure of me what to expect and whatnot. So <laughs> maybe there's a little trepidation there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would, I, I would completely understand. <laughs> and lastly, um, you obviously being in the money in the bank ladder match you have a you have a great opportunity we talked about how we've seen it change careers and now that there are two world championships we've got the wwe title which has an extensive history throughout the wwe we've got the new world heavyweight championship which also has an extensive history but it's just been revived so there's an opportunity here to kind of restart a, 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 a legacy and continue a legacy I don't want you to spoil your plans, assuming that you win. I don't want you to let the people know, you know, this is what I'm going for. But are you more interested in continuing a very storied legacy for a title or kind of being one of the new faces to prop up a title that some people are being reintroduced to? There's pros and cons to both. Um, I um, can't deny that that new championships, uh, it's a beauty. Uh, the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, 
at the same time, if you're the guy who goes and ends the streak of the WWE champion, that's eh, a pretty big deal. Uh, so, so I feel like that now you've got two things to talk about. So here's a guy who continues that lineage of the title, but at the same time has also come in and just disrupted years of a reign. So, um, tough decision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing well, what decision you make, you know, if, if, and when you're able to win the money in the bank briefcase, There's a lot of people pulling for you. <laughs> uh, so I hear <laughs> well i, I want to thank you so much for your time i want to wish you the best of luck in that ladder match be safe man stretch um hydrate <laughs> of course all the time every day that's my guy same here <laughs> there you go all right have, have a good one man thank you so much i appreciate it baby girl baby girl how you feeling i've been out in the world staying busy taking time getting right if you miss me Got the slides, got the slides. I'm the size, I'm the size.